Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we'll find the interval of convergence of a power series. Let's consider the power series. Summation, n equals 1 to infinity, x minus 1 to the n over the square root of n times 3 to the n. Let's answer the question, which values of x does the series converge? So whether the series converges or diverges will depend on the value of the variable x. <clears throat> it turns out that the values for which the series converges will form an interval. And that interval will be centered around what we call the center of the power series, which in this case is the number 1. So this is a power series with center at x equals 1. So the answer will be an interval centered at x equals 1. For example, if we go two units to the left of 1 and two units to the right of 1, we would get the interval, for example, from negative 1 to 3. Uh, that's a possible answer. I don't think it's the actual answer in this particular problem, but that's what the answer will look like, an interval centered at 1. <clears throat> to find the actual interval of convergence, uh, we will use the ratio test. So we will compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n using the ratio test. In this example, this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over the square root of n plus 1 times 3 to the n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. In computing a n plus 1 over a n, uh, since a n is usually a fraction, we think of this as being a n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. So the reciprocal of a n, I'll put here. That's the square root of n times 3 to the n over x minus 1 to the n. So we need to calculate the limit of this quantity. I would like to simplify this quantity. There are three different types of terms. There are the square root uh, terms of factors, really. Then there's the exponential factors, 3 to the n and 3 to the n plus 1. And then there are the factors involving x, x minus 1 to the n plus 1, and x minus 1 to the n. So we will uh, simplify this by considering those types separately. So for example, for the square roots, this is the square root of n over n plus 1. The square root of n over the square root of n plus 1, we can put those under a single square root. Square root of n over n plus 1. And then the powers of 3, 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1, uh, 3 to the n divided by 3 to the power n plus 1, that's going to be 1 over 3. There's one more 3 in the denominator than there is in the numerator, so that's 1 over 3. And then for the x's, x minus 1 to the power n plus 1 over x minus 1 to the power n. It's similar to what happened with the 3's. There's one more factor of x minus 1 in the numerator, <clears throat> so that's going to be x minus 1. So notice here I, I maintained the absolute value bars uh, with the square root and with the one third. Uh, it's not that I forgot to write them, it's that these were positive quantities, and so they didn't need to be in the absolute value bars. Uh, since we don't know the value of x, we can't be sure if x minus 1 is positive or negative, so it's important that we leave the absolute value bars here. And in the end, it's those absolute value bars that are going to be responsible for creating an interval uh, that's symmetric around the center. <clears throat> now computing the limit, n is going to infinity, so the quantity under the square root is going to 1, because we have n to the first power over n to the first power, a 
Uh, we would compute the limit by looking at the ratio of the lead coefficients. So that would be 1 over 1. So the limit here is the square root of 1 times 1 third times the absolute value of x minus 1. The second and third factors here do not contain any n's. So they are constant as far as n is concerned. 1 third is a constant in any case. And x minus 1 is considered a constant as we're taking a limit uh, with n going to infinity. So this is our limit. I guess we could write this as, as absolute value of x minus 1 over 3. <clears throat> so that's the limit. Now, when we were doing the ratio test, uh, the way we make conclusions in the ratio test, if this limit is less than 1, then the series will converge. So let's analyze what happens if this fraction is less than 1. That means that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 3. And then removing the absolute value bars, this means that x minus 1 is between negative 3 and 3. And finally, we add 1 to all three members of the inequality. So we have x is between negative 2 and 4. So notice that that is an interval, there's an interval centered around x equals 1. And the radius of the interval is 3. If we go from 1, 3 units to the left, and 3 units to the right, we will get negative 2 and 4. So the, uh, that distance from the center to the edge of the interval is called the radius of convergence. So the interval of convergence is x between negative 2 and 4, and the radius of convergence is x equals 3, is r equals 3. Um, actually here, the endpoints of the interval uh, may need to be included. You see, when you do the ratio test, if this limit equals 1, then there's no conclusion. So what we need to do is go back to the original problem, and we need to plug in. We need to go back to the original problem, and we need to plug in the endpoints, which are x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. We need to see if we should include the endpoints or not. Uh, so let's go back to the original problem and plug in x equals 4. We'll start with that one. So let x equal 4 in the original problem. It becomes the summation n equals 1 to infinity of 4 minus 1 to the n over the square root of n times 3 to the n, which is the summation of 3 to the n over the square root of n times 3 to the n. And we notice here that the 3 to the n's cancel out, and we're getting the summation n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n. This is a p-series. We could write this as the summation n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 half. So this is a p-series with p equals 1 half. And the rule for a p-series is, since this 1 half is less than or equal to 1, the series diverges. series diverges. So when x is equal to 4, the series will diverge. So 4 should not be included in the interval of convergence. <clears throat> negative 2, on the other hand, if we plug that in, so now let's let x equal negative 2. So we have the summation n equals 1 to infinity of, let's save ourselves a, a little bit of space here. We're plugging negative 2 in for x. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So we have negative 3 to the n over the square root of n times 3 to the n. And then we can, we can write these two fractions as negative 3 over 3 to the n, that fraction. Negative 3 to the n over 3 to the n can be rewritten as negative 3 over 3 quantity to the n. And that, of course, is negative 1 to the n. So we have summation n equals 1 to infinity, 
negative 1 to the n times 1 over the square root of n. So this is what's called an alternating p-series. The p is 1 half again, of course. But this is an alternating p-series. And the alternating p-series will converge for any power p uh, bigger than 0. So any positive power. Here the power again was 1 half. p is 1 half. It's bigger than zero, and so the series converges. So an alternating p-series basically always converges. You need a positive power on the bottom, uh, which is not asking a lot. So the alternating p-series will converge. So going back to our interval of convergence, negative two should be included in the interval of convergence. When x is equal to negative two, the series does converge. So the final answer, should look like this. The interval of convergence is the interval still centered at 1 and radius 3 and include the left endpoint. x should be bigger than or equal to negative 2 and strictly less than 4. Uh, in interval notation, the interval of convergence for which values of x does the series converge from negative 2 with a square bracket to 4 with a round bracket. Okay, so there's uh, an example of finding the interval of convergence of a power series. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful.